So welcome everybody to our uh, brand new webinar. So who we are, uh, we are the World Sustainability Organization. The World Sustainability Organization has uh, two main projects called the Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth. Friend of the Sea uh, deals mainly with uh, the certification of products from sustainable fisheries and aquaculture. And uh, Friend of the Earth, that is a kind of sister, uh, deals with the certification of products from sustainable agriculture and farming. We have uh, certified uh, since 2008 uh, uh, more than uh, 1,000 companies uh, from more than uh, uh, 100 countries worldwide. Uh, today, our webinar is called Offsetting Our Plastic Footprint to Support a Clean Oceans, uh, Circular Economy and Sustainable Livelihoods. With us, we have uh, two special guests. Lisiane from uh, Nagua Bio, that is uh, the general manager, and my brand new colleague, Adrian, that is uh, the uh, plastic offset development officer at the WSO. Okay, just a few words about uh, our uh, conservation and awareness project before we start the webinar. Uh, since 2021, uh, we created uh, and carried out uh, different conservation awareness projects, both for Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth. So as you can see in this slide, uh, for Friend of the Sea, we have uh, several projects about albatross, uh, penguins, uh, uh, sharks, uh, whales, and so on. And something similar we have uh, for uh, Friend of the Earth, uh, about uh, parrots, frogs, uh, butterflies, and so on. As you can see here, there is a map, uh, just to give you an overview about where uh, we are with our uh, projects. So <laughs> as you can see from this map, we are uh, almost uh, everywhere <laughs> uh, for Friend of the Sea and also for uh, Friend of the Earth. So if you have uh, then a specific question about uh, our uh, project, conservation awareness project, just uh, ask us or visit our website uh, in the dedicated pages. All right, it looks like I'm in control here, so I just need to share my screen. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, as Mario mentioned, I've just joined the World Sustainability Organization as the Plastic Offset Development Officer. Um, we have, have a dedicated web page there. Uh, the link is at the bottom of that slide and as well, uh, we, I guess over in the questions or somewhere, Mario, if we can put the, um, the URL up, that'd be probably helpful for everyone. Um, so Mario has done a little bit of a background on the World Sustainability Org, so I'm going to slide straight through here. Uh, the only thing I would add is that our certifications are actually accredited by international bodies. So I think our point of difference with what we're doing, not just with uh, our aquaculture and agriculture, friend of the sea, friend of the earth, um, even with plastic offsets, these are verified. Um, and that's always been an issue, especially when entering the plastic offset world, is uh, there's never really been a third party accreditation to, uh, to verify where these are going. Um, so the benefits of joining a World Sustainability Organization, again, this is um, very public on our website of all the different benefits that you get by, by joining us. Um, we are a third party certification. Uh, we do video, video interviews. We'll, uh, you'll have gained media visibility by telling the world that you do practice sustainability in your industry. Uh, three direct consultancies, four one on one meetings. And these things are normally to help your company become more sustainable or at least just answer direct questions on, especially with this program here with plastic offsets, where these funds will be directed. And we can always tailor that to what your company is interested in supporting as well. Um, who am I? <laughs> well, um, I have a, a large history in plastic pollution. Um, we'll get to that on the next slide. But originally, I'm a, a, an ocean captain. So I, I'm back on Vancouver Island now. This is where I'm working from. Um, I have 20 years in marine operations, 15 years as an ocean captain. The past 10 years, I've been in marine conservation, sustainable development, and social enterprise management. Uh, that happened just directly from being a captain and seeing the issues of what was happening with our oceans. That led directly into plastic pollution, um, of which I was eight years the founder and managing director of a grassroots organization in the South Pacific Islands, based out of Fiji for most of that time, um, however, working in the surrounding areas. 
And then when I returned to Canada, I became the executive director of a registered Canadian charity arm for a global foundation working directly on plastic pollution. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm a 200 ton ocean captain, Patty open water scuba instructor. Um, in my past, we did two world firsts in human powered, nature powered ocean crossings. So um, yeah, I've just been lucky enough to live most of my life directly related to the ocean. And this is why this cause is so near and dear to my heart because uh, it is my whole life. So in those 10 years working on plastic pollution, there's a little bit of a breakdown there on the left-hand side of um, what we did over those years. On the right, we've got some photos of projects we were directly working on. Um, I had a, a low-cost research vessel, which we saw on the previous slide, where we housed most of this going on, and that was my office. Um, we we're making alternative fuels here out of waste plastic on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, we toured Vanuatu, New Caledonia, um, Norfolk Island, and then returning home, we started working with larger corporations. You can see Lululemon down there at the bottom. Um, there's also a slide here on the bottom where I'm holding a microplastic extraction technology. So really over the years, we've had a hand in everything, whether or not that's just cleanups or circular economy, or even working on extracting microplastics from the ocean. So over those 10 years, what did we learn? <laughs> we learned really that we have the technology and it's getting better every single day. I mean, we can stop plastic from entering the ocean. We can clean it from the environment. Those things aren't very hard, but we also have the technology in circular economy on micro and industrial scale. And the reason I put micro and industrial is we can really support grassroots organizations in the developing world to make second life products out of the waste plastics that we collect. On an industrial scale, that's where it's gonna work for you know the first world. I mean, we can, on a large scale, process waste plastics into something new and re-enter it into the economy, or we can eliminate it from our environment if it's truly at its end of life. And we're gonna to touch on end of life with one of the programs we're supporting a little bit later on. We can eliminate the plastics from the environment, as I was saying with those alternative fuels, and through the programs that we're supporting in the third world, there's job creation through that. You know, we are actually creating sustainable livelihoods by employing people to clean the plastic and then re-enter it into the circular economy. Um, then there's always volunteer engagement opportunities locally and abroad. I mean, we did this a little bit in the South Pacific. And we created opportunities for people to come down, enjoy these countries and work with the local organizations. So that's a great sort of cross learning opportunity that we can, we're not necessarily doing at this stage with WSO, but it could be potentially something in the future, working with our partners as we set them up more concrete. So frequently asked questions. We do have this page on our website. Predominantly, we want to look at the top two. Um, what is the difference between an offset and a credit? So offsets have been around for a little while with carbon. Um, so we really just want to point out that plastic credits stand for the right to produce or utilize that amount of plastic. Well, we're working more in offsets, while the plastic offset represents the defined weight offset of plastic removed from our environment and oceans. <laughs> So by choosing an offset, you counterbalance the use of the plastic in your company's process. Um, and then what are plastic offsets? Essentially, it's just an effective way to protect our oceans and marine life. Companies, individuals who wanna have a real impact can offset your plastic footprint and we can redirect those funds into the field on a defined weight volume that is already utilized. Your contributions will help by preventing plastic pollution. And by offsetting with us, we get to directly contribute to the recovery of certified ocean-bound plastics. We can re-enter these plastics into the circular economy, as I was mentioning before. Most plastic cleanups are already going beyond the cleanup. We have to think about what happens after the cleanup, you know, because a lot of times in the early days, people were performing these large beach cleanups and ocean cleanups, and then the garbage had nowhere to go, especially in the developing world. So it's quite crucial that we're actually working directly with people who can re-enter this into the circular economy. And we're creating that social change. The money you're investing in offsets is actually dispersed accordingly with a portion going directly to waste collectors. Again, going back to that sustainable livelihoods. So 
the brass tax of it all is one euro per one kilogram of plastic and that will offset a company's plastic usage and we can work with all industries you know fishing nets in aquaculture because that is where friend of the sea started is working with aquaculture and there's already starting to be some plastic offset or plastic neutral fisheries i believe it was uh, the azores who were the first uh, fisheries that have actually completely offset their plastic footprint not with us hopefully in the future <laughs> but it just shows that industry is starting to catch up um, so think about nets and lines and other waste i actually spent um, the past six months working on commercial plastic extraction from derelict aquaculture sites in british columbia off vancouver island mm -hmm. there's a massive weight volume of waste plastic generated through the aquaculture industry. And as well, the heaviest weight volume of waste plastic in the ocean is from ghost nets. So that is a direct byproduct of the fishing industry. And if we move down and think about fashion and textiles, you know, any nylon based clothing is plastic based. So if you think about activewear, like yoga pants or a rain jacket, swim shorts, bikinis, anything that is nylon based essentially is a plastic product. Right. So every single time you wash those, those synthetic materials actually will shed microplastics into the ocean through the wash stream. So you're ac actually creating plastic waste. Even if you're using recycled plastic materials, it is actually still becoming more plastic waste down the line. So we just need to think about that. Um, products, physical products. So obviously, we can think of, you know, plastic toys. Um, you know, just little things in everyday usage. We all know that plastic is used across the board. Food packaging, uh, if you think about it, takeaway containers um, is, a, is a large one. Uh, alternatives are coming out and it is a great deal of what we do with the companies we work with is actually consult on finding alternatives. And then shipping waste. And we're gonna to touch on shipping waste at the end of the presentation for an exciting new initiative that we're actually working with with uh, e-commerce. So shipping waste actually does create a large amount of plastic. Um, so WSO actually has existing collaborative projects already on plastic pollution. Um, we can you can find these on our website. We are also able to send you the direct links. On the left hand side here, we've got our project that we recently supported in the Galapagos Islands um, with the Galapagos Conservation Trust. Uh, actually, I believe Mario set that all up since he is our conservation officer. <laughs> And then on the right hand side, um, this is a technology that we supported with the Friend of the Sea sustainable certification as a solution provider. And that's River Cleaners, which is a European technology company that has actually recently, I think we've got this later in a slide, but they've just won an award with the European Horizon Grant um, to do some more research and development on how, how they can stop plastic entering the Mediterranean Sea through rivers. And these are, that's actually a passive system where it's not necessarily like some of the larger organizations that are completely blocking off a river for a period of time and collecting plastic, which is great because it stops it going in the ocean. This system is something that can be installed and left in, and uh, marine traffic can still navigate through. Um, and we're gonna touch on it later because they also clean oil and everything and it's a great solution. So, we are pretty aware throughout the world that we have a problem with plastic. Um, we're gonna, if, hopefully it's okay with everyone. I might fly through these slides relatively quickly because I do believe the, the global consciousness is, is aware, but if anyone's not quite sure about all the issues, we are going to, to touch on them here over the next few slides. So we have wildlife issues. Um, that top photo there is, um, you know, what a plastic bag looks like in the ocean. And really, if you think about it, that looks like a jellyfish. So that's a turtle's favorite food. So if you think of a turtle swimming around and seeing a plastic bag, they're going to go over there and eat that. Um, and then obviously that's going to be clogging their ingest ingestion system. Um, we've also got a turtle down there on the left, bottom left hand side that actually got trapped in a six pack beverage uh, ring. And then the shell tried to grow, but it was restricted. So we have entanglement and we've obviously seen photos of dolphins and whales and everything tangled up in fishing lines. On the bottom middle, you'll actually see the rotting corpse of a albatross from Midway Island. And these images have been around forever. This is, these slides are actually taken from an education program we designed in Fiji 10 years ago for the Australian government. 
So these are not new slides. This is old. This is existing information that's been around for a while. Um, and you can see all the plastic bits that are in its stomach. So essentially it died from pollution in its own stomach and then just composted away on this uninhabited island. And you can see exactly what was in its stomach. And on the right hand side, you can see uh, the average number of pieces that are found in these animals on uninhabited islands where, you know, it's a little bit out of sight, out of mind that this is happening every single day. And then we've all heard about the, the ocean gyres are the garbage patches in, in the oceans. And this is just highlighting uh, where the major ones are. And this is an image that was produced by Five Gyres Institute, which is an excellent research organization and probably one of the, the sort of founding bodies really getting the information out there of um, where we're getting these congregations. And for those people that don't work in the ocean every single day, a gyre is a congregation zone where predominant wind patterns and ocean currents are going to have all of that garbage come together. And it's not necessarily a patch or an island that you can walk on. It's more of a, it's soupy. It's, a, it's all loose material, right? But you can actually notice it as you drive through it or even flying over it sometimes. Mostly if you're at water level, though, when you're sailing through, you, you start seeing little bits of plastic here and there. And next thing you start seeing larger containers and, and more and more as you go through. So, yeah, just identifying where we have got our major patches. Um, again, this is impacting not just the animals themselves, but it's impacting our own food stream. Right. So if you think about microplastics and then a small fish coming along and eating that and then a bigger fish and then we're eating that fish you know we're actually ingesting our own waste so over on the right hand side we've got some st statistics you know that large photo is an installation in a museum where it's showing that three metric tons of plastic that does enter our ocean every 15 seconds Again, this is a little bit of an older slide. I would say the number's actually gone up, sadly, considering it's not actually gone down. You know, everyone is, the global consciousness has gotten better, but we have been producing more and more waste as the years have gone by. So we can all really agree that plastic is a problem in our environment, right? We don't like eating plastic. We don't like it killing our wildlife. Um, so what are we gonna do about it? We do have alternatives and ways to reduce plastic in our business. Um, we're, we didn't set up the plastic offset program to just create a fund stream to, to support cleanups and circular economy and sustainable livelihoods. It's really an all encompassing 360 degree partnership with the companies that we're, we're setting up to work with on there. And luckily with Lycian and Nagua Bio, they've already gone the next step and reduced a lot of plastic in their packaging and everything we really just came in at that end side and just offset the existing plastic that was still there that they haven't been able to eliminate from the company. So it's a great first partnership. Um, bioplastics. <laughs> I put the solution we all wanted to work because we really did want this to be a solution. However, it's actually proven over time that it's not necessarily the direction that we want to head completely. So we'll look at the pros. I mean, it is, a lot of bioplastics are plant-based. They're non-petroleum based because plastic is essentially just hard oil. Um, biodegradable, compostable. Uh, the reason I put a question mark there is a lot of these actually need to go into a commercial composting facility. They don't just compost in a traditional backyard. Compost are going back to the earth as it sort of suggests with um, those terms. Um, it can be injection molded. So basically you can recreate any plastic product with these bioplastics. And it does reduce that carbon footprint because you're not relying on virgin fossil fuels. The cons are they essentially cause the same harm to wildlife as traditional plastics. I mean, these products themselves, because they don't go back to the earth really as advertised, is they're still doing the same damage, um, especially to wildlife. There's also concerns around food supply issues with feedstocks to produce these materials, which is a little bit debatable. And I do have that there in the slide because a lot of the ones with, say, cornstarch or the byproducts of sugarcane production, um, it, it actually can be the byproduct. You don't actually have to take anything new from that food supply chain. So that's just something to consider. Um, they do have a shorter lifespan as they are designed to break down. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword you know you've got something that doesn't really recreate plastic because it has a shorter lifespan because it's supposed to be breaking down so we 
we're somewhere in the middle here. And again, it's why it's the solution we wanted to work. It just really hasn't um, lived up to what the expectations were. And then most of these products still contain a whole host of dangerous chemicals. Um, and then they aren't recyclable like traditional plastics. So it's been a bit of a full circle moment where you know we can recycle existing plastics and we can re uh, recapture those fossil fuels that are in there and use it as an alternative fuel. Um, so with bioplastics, it's something to consider. Now, I'm not saying it's completely bad. I mean, it is an alternative, but we have to look at the whole, whole side. But there are great alternatives to plastic packaging. <laughs> so I wanted to not just do doom and gloom here is um, there are a lot of great existing systems coming out. Um, if you think about, we talked about shipping waste and we're gonna go back there in a second is, um, you know, we really can look at completely 100% recycled padded mailers with a company like Eco Enclose. Or you look at seventh generation who, you know, it's a laundry detergent company, it's, it's liquid and they actually have a recycled pulp container. And then this is a prime example of where we would come in on the financial offset is those lids and the disbursement of the liquid. Majority of that container, completely compostable, made out of you know, a plant-based product. And then, however, they still don't have a, a solution for that top bit of the plastic, we can come in and offset that. Um, and then there's Loop, which is uh, created by TerraCycle, and they're working with some of the biggest brands in the world. And this is, you know, it's not necessarily a new concept. This is just reusable or refillable containers with large companies actively trying to be part of the solution of producing waste. So it's great. We do have alternatives. As I put there, a little bit of a spoiler alert. These things aren't as cheap and convenient as traditional plastics. However, we have learned that the way we were doing business is not necessarily working due to the waste that we've created. So lots of stuff to look into there. Again, signing up to our program, you get these one-on-one -on -one talks and we'll work with you to find the best solution um, and then offset the plastic that still exists in your supply chain. So we really want to touch on reducing and straight up refusing plastics is the only true cure to this issue surrounding the world. I mean, we don't want to create a system where people are just producing as much plastic as they want through their businesses and then paying us to offset it. That's that's not what our system is here for. We're here to work with you on reducing and refusing as much as possible, finding those alternatives, and then using the offset monies to combat what is still existing. So getting into who we are and what we aim to support with these plastic offset funds. Um, up top, we've got sort of three, I chose these three because they're sort of our introductory ones as we're getting this program off the ground of who we want to work with. Uh, the top or the two, the two on either side are ones that are already existing in our ecosystem at the World Sustainability Org. So that's the Galapagos Conservation Trust. And on the far right, we have river cleaners and that's that river cleaning technology I touched on earlier. In the middle is actually a, um, a company out of India who is called Rudra Environmental. And because we're just getting off the ground, we, you know, we haven't actually set up exactly how we want to work together. All I know is that they have the large numbers and their technology that they're using to eliminate plastic from the environment, whether that's turning it into alternative fuels or all the byproduct from that system is now going into creating roads, is um, it's something that we really want to support. They've created a lot of jobs in India and um, they're actually really re-entering that or eliminating the plastics from the environment. So we really want to see that relationship grow. And here's some more details on Ruja Environmental. You can see some of the work that they get up to. Um, we'll just sort of go down on the pictures here. This is their collection scheme that they've set up through their uh, Kishav Sita Memorial Foundation Trust, um, which has collected over 350 million kilograms of plastic pollution in India. That's a really large number. And if you think about for us to even match where they've already got to at $1 or one euro per kilogram, that's a lot of money that we need to raise to, to actually match what they've already existingly captured from the environment. Moving down directly below that, we've got a woman that is actually cooking um, with the kerosene, which is the plastic derived kerosene. Um, and over directly beside her is one of the founders of that company making this oil, which 
you know, I've, I've worked on plastic oil for 10 years and people have often said that you're com promoting complacency or um, dependent on fossil fuels. It, it exists. We have a demand for kerosene, for diesel at this stage. And if we eliminate this plastic from our environment, the energy transformation in there, we're actually gaining 10 units of energy. Um, it means that the plastic that is at end of life, and we only do this with end of life plastic, um, it's gone now and we can actually create something that people need. And then on that bottom right hand corner, um, we can see the byproduct of that system going into being an aggregate for creating roads. Um, and this is really at the end of end of life cycle. This is not nothing like plastics that would be useful. Um, it's essentially just that ash or that um, biochar is what we call it. And then on that sort of bottom left, you can see they've actually got a collection scheme going on um, in partnership with all of the different people that they're working with, um, actually collecting and creating a recycling system in a country where it didn't, didn't exist previously. Um, and all of this has happened over the last about 12 years, maybe 14 years maximum. So they've done and they started with the technology <laughs> and then they had to go backwards all the way full circle to, to actually create the supply chain because it was out there in the environment, but nobody was collecting it. So they've really done all sides and uh, we really look forward to working with them. Uh, river cleaners, as I mentioned before, you can sort of see this technology at work and it's, as I uh, was touching on, it's actually passive. So these little circles here, a boat can actually navigate through there. Um, you know, it'd be a small craft. You know, we're talking about rivers before the, um, the plastic enters the ocean. So we're not talking about large container ships or, or um, even large private vessels. These are just sort of small crafts that would be navigating through these rivers. However, we can set up these systems to actually stop the plastic entering. Um, they've got a secondary system, which I would say is the third row down in the photos where they're actually collecting oil as well. So any sort of waste oil or waste carbons that are floating through the river can now get captured in their system. And that goes down and transferred over to the collection point and cleaned up from our environment. And uh, as you can see, we actually already have an existing partnership with them as our logos down there. And um, they just received a, a nice grant from the Horizon Europe Foundation and will be actively uh, extending their research and development, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, the Galapagos Conservation Trust, again, this is something that we already existingly support, um, which Mario works directly on. So if you have any questions on, ask him. Um, I get the direct hope with that is this is more of a scientific research project and then that leads into other sides but it's identifying where the plastic pollution is originating from that is arriving on the galapagos islands and with the galapagos islands being a unesco world heritage site and essentially just um you know it, people do live there and people visit there all the time but it really is sort of a special place in our world that we need to protect and make sure that outside pollution is not coming into so how to offset your company's plastic footprint as we mentioned earlier it's uh that one dollar or one euro per kilogram of plastic used and the reason i keep saying one dollar or one euro is that you know uh, currencies change however when i was writing this they're, they're relatively similar so we want to make sure that we're we're actually hitting the right mark um there's a few examples here uh we've got uh, nagua bio in the middle and you'll hear from lyciani um shortly and that was a company that was already existing in our ecosystem. Um, they were sustainable products. And we, as we started launching this project a couple months ago, we, we touched base and, and they offset the last couple bits of plastic that were in their, their system. Um, they were already a sustainable company. They're already doing great work, doing everything they could. However, there was still some plastic there. Up top, we have uh, Artvana, which is a, it's actually a subscription box. And this is something that I'd really like to work with, especially because there's a lot of shipping waste created with these. Um, again, Artvana is more of a sustainable one. Um, their founder, Ricky, had already done a lot of steps minimizing the, the plastic in their shipments and their live painting events. And um, then we worked with her to offset the remaining plastics that were in her business. And we actually were able to eliminate a couple of other products that were uh, that she was still mailing out every month or using in her uh, in her live events so we're able to give some suggestions there 
And then the offset value was actually quite low in the end. And that's why we were offered this great quote about how easy it was and affordable. And then the last here is where we're actually going to go for the end of my side of the presentation is we've actually partnered with the Shop for Good donation app on Shopify. Originally, we were going to design our own app to, to plug into e-commerce providers. However, the, the research and development, um, the software side, it was just made way more sense to work with somebody that has the existing infrastructure. And we really can go beyond Shopify here. We can work with any e-commerce side. It just might require a little bit of uh, software development. However, if you're an e-commerce store, we can effectively offset the plastic in your products and your shipping today by just installing the Shop for Good donation app. And then we work directly with you on how to do that. And the reason behind this and why it's a large focus of what I'm working on is I came across this report that was put out by Oceana now a couple of years ago, and it really showed what the e-commerce plastic footprint is. And this is all on shipping plastic waste. This has nothing to do with the products that Amazon was shipping. This is 100% numbers on just the shipping waste created. So 599 million pounds of plastic packaging waste in 2020. And that's a ridiculous number. Um, going through their survey, you know, 1,400 Amazon Prime customers were interviewed and they found that 94.8% are concerned about the plastic pollution in our oceans and 91% said that Amazon should reduce its plastic and packaging. So if we have over 90% of consumers already deciding that something needs to be done, however, there is some demand or we do have a, still a need or uh, alternatives aren't existing completely in this chain. So yes, we can work on reduction, but there's still going to be plastic waste at this stage. And we're here to work on offsetting that effectively. And we want to work with all e-commerce stores. We don't have a partnership with Amazon. We would love to have one. So if anyone ever there watches this, how do we do that? Um, we've got the right software team to work on that with you. Let's get there. So we've also got some, some charts here. If anyone wants to zoom in on this, on exactly what that packaging looks like and where it's coming from, you know, we've got 12% is coming from shrink films. 22 is the other types. 31% um, is in pouches and bags. And 35% of this packaging is coming from protective packaging. And these are all things we don't even think about, or a lot of people don't think about in their everyday life or everyday packaging that shows up, all right? So this really does break it down. If anyone's interested in these charts or these reports, uh, gladly just send us an email. I'll send you the links and um, we'll get it there for you. So the reason we're starting with the Shopify plugin is Shopify has this open door where you can build a plugin app and any store that is on the Shopify system can right now today go to shop for good donation app. It's called daily karma, plug it in, and then we'll work with you on offsetting that plastic. Um, and that comes from every single shipment. And we're only talking about fractions of a dollar for per shipment because this shipping waste is very small amounts and weight. We're not even ever really looking at a full kilogram of plastic waste per shipment. So these are going to be 10 cents, 20 cents, but it's the accumulative side where's where we're going to be able to do the impact so plug-in apps i mean this is just some brief numbers on um you know these shopify stores and using apps so why not use one app that actually does good with your business and it also aligns your company with um with with a cause base where you don't need to necessarily micromanage it you know you just know exactly where that's going and uh, you can feel good that your business is completely plastic neutral so a little bit about Daily Karma and the Shop for Good donation app. Um, they've been around for a while. Um, they've got a great ecosystem. Uh, again, they're working across all e-commerce platforms. However, mostly the plug and play side is on Shopify. However, if you're with WooCommerce, Wix, all these other ones, Salesforce, they already have that existing backend. And, and there will be a little bit of tweaking here and there, but we can work with you to make it work if, if you want to get on board. So again, send us any questions you have. Otherwise, you can just go into that backend store, plug it in, and we can take her from there. 
I think I've talked enough for 7 a.m. my time. <laughs> so I'm going to pass this back over to uh, Mario. And I will, um, I'm here for any questions. I'm not going anywhere. And you can, uh, Adrian, sorry, you can give the control directly to Lisiane. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you too much to Friend of the Sea for this amazing opportunity. Uh, I want to apologize for my not fluent English, so uh, I will try to do my best to be understood and uh, explain our idea of ecology at the sea. First of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Licia Anikinik. I'm manager from Nagua Company. Uh, our, our idea is to pro propose ecological solution for the boaters so uh, that they can coexist in a sustainable way with the marine ecosystem without harming it. The idea of our company came from our personal experience as boater and my special attention to the environment and nature. We realized that no filter to retain marine pollution, the, the things that we do on board, ends up directly into the sea. So our propose uh, is about uh, it's all about this concept, inviting the boaters to use only eco-friendly and certificate products on their boat, either for personal use or for boat care. To help me introduce our idea, uh, I would like to share a short video just uh, to explain our idea as invisible pollution. What the video was mean is a visual translation of the invisible pollution. When I talk about the, this, I mean chemicals and petrochemicals origin product that uh, are used in the boat goes directly into the sea. It is simple to think uh, there is no water in the sea uh, with, the, with so little quantity of product and I cannot pollute. Uh, also, once this product uh, is released in the sea, is no longer visible. But the truth is not like this. The chemical ingredients released into nature are harmful to the boat, uh, to person, and to to the ecosystem. In addition, products of petrochemical origin uh, it's also released the famous microplastics that ends up uh, on. Uh, our table eating fish. This is the way uh, that we have created an eco-friendly line of products dedicated to be now to, to nautical boater. Because uh, our objective is to promote the use of sustainable products in boating, either for boat care, but also for personal care. Uh, our company is based on the principle of respect respect for nature, respect for people and for the sea. And to guarantee uh, what our products are truly eco-friendly, we take uh, the certifications. So today in the market, we, we can find all kind of organic products. There are so many words used, uh, such as eco-friendly, ecological, green, natural, sustainable, etc. On the left, we have an example of a product taken on Google search as eco-friendly marine product. But my question for you is, have you ever seen, for example, these colors in nature? Uh, I understand as a consumer, it's not easy to know if a product is uh, really eco-friendly or not. For this reason, uh, it's very important to have, uh, have to have a certification on the label because the certifying organizations like a uh, friend of the sea, IAB, ICEA, uh, they have not the interest of the business company, but they have the interest to, to guarantee to the consumer that the product respects a uh, rigid criteria for not pollution. Uh, so these certificators uh, evaluate the entire formula, not only surfactants, but all, all, these in, but all ingredients and the, pollu the, the production chain to give to the consumer more transparency. Uh, so, uh, I would like to con to share you uh, some suggestions for choosing a really eco-friendly product. First thing, you have to check on the label uh, if that product there is a certification. Uh, look for the ingredients on the label. Many companies prefer to not show them in uh, in, uh, in, the, in the label, and this is not transparency. Uh, biodegradability is not only from the surfactants, but uh, that is to be complete form. For example, fragrance, dyes, parabens, etc. And this is this information has to appear on the label. Uh, 
Um, all of this, however, you can find in Nagua products that are certifications and ingredients displayed on the label. Our goal is to be transparent with the consumer. And, uh, and, we, and when we say uh, that our uh, products are eco-friendly, um, our words are supported by the certifications that check that uh, our products are really green. Uh, nowadays, it's very difficult to live without plastic, but there is alternatives such as cosmetic solids, plastic-free packaging, the, pl the, the plastic is present uh, on most kind of products uh, that we use in cosmetics, cleaning products, food products, etc. All these uh, packaging in contact with the ocean can become a great catastrophe they can fly, uh, fly off uh, of the boat or because people don't recycle well or simple because many people discard plastic into the wild. Needless to say how much, how damning, damning this is to the sea and to the marine environment. So in addiction to, to be invisible pollution given by chemical products, there is also the problem from the plastic. Nagua is a company it's very focused in uh, finding solution for the plastic in uh, in the sea and for and for this we are very happy to have the plastic offset certification this uh, apply to business company like us but also to the individuals so all of us can can do something to help plastic collection even if it's not our <laughs> so thank you so much and i'm finished Thank you very much, Lisiane. Okay, so you can uh, stop uh, sharing your screen. Yeah. Okay, and now we can go uh, through the questions we got. Actually, I got... Oh, oh can I give you just a... Uh, because when um, Adrian said before about Amazon and about uh, online shopping, I remember, I, I think there is... We do, for, when we make uh, our e-commerce, we do with uh, with paper, not with. Um, so I think there is there is many solutions if the companies or people wants to to choose this kind of solutions. We need we need to help always for 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 increase this this situation. Excellent. Thank you very much. So I will uh, uh, have a look about the questions. We have two questions for now. So the first question. Uh, is uh, hello i am an individual and i would like to know if i can join the project uh, uh, this question is uh, for you agent yes um, we are working on a plastic offset calculator for individuals there are ones that are existing so i, I would say the best thing to do right now is just contact us and i can or just even write your email and a question or in a message board to me and um, what I can do is work with you directly. Generally speaking, your average person, if you're even ecologically minded, um, uses about 25 kilograms of plastic per year. That's a pretty standard number, but we can actually work with you and, and find the transparent number of your lifestyle, what you use every single day and calculate that and find the offset number. In the future, we will have that available on the website where you go to the plastic offset page and you can calculate it right there, find your number, and directly offset um, in development. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you very much. I will add that, uh, yes, our uh, uh, consumption of plastic, uh, if we think about it, can be massive. Uh, I mean, if we think uh, in general uh, about uh, if we drink one bottle of water, here in Italy, for example, is uh, one liter and a half, okay? Let's say one per day is almost uh, 400 uh, bottles of plastic water per year and just about water so <laughs> it's impressive if you multiply this for the number eh, yes uh, bravo bravi, bravi. okay 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 <laughs> i have mine too somewhere but uh, okay uh yeah, yeah it could be impressive if, if we really think about how much plastic we use uh, it's wow <laughs> so it it will be good to do something 
Yeah, and as well, I mean, like Lysiana was showing with the shipping, there's always solutions, right? The same with, so if somebody comes in and they want to offset their plastic footprint for the year, it's great. We obviously want to do that. However, we also are going to offer some solutions, you know, if we're doing a calculation on where that plastic is in your life, we can always offer some quick suggestions on how you can minimize that. Mm. Uh, again, reducing and refusing is the number one way. Excellent. Okay, so we have another question. How do you approach companies to propose the plastic offset certification? Right now, we've just been emailing directly to companies that we see think might be a fit. Um, I mean, we have an open door. <laughs> so if you're a company that um, that is interested in joining this program, just reach out to myself, uh, Outreach20 at WSO Group, and then or our contact us page on the website, and we'll get in touch with you and, and start the process. Um, we also because we have existing companies, this is essentially an add-on. And that's how we worked with Nagua Bio as they were already existing as part of Friend of the Sea. And then we added this onto their certification. So I would say uh, we're trying to call and email as many companies as we possibly can. But if you're interested, best thing to do is just reach out to us and then we, um, we start the process. And whether that's eliminating the plastic in your system through verified sustainable products or offsetting the end of um, yeah, the plastic still exists. Hmm. OK, so we have uh, another question. It's always for you, Adrian. Is there a minimum quantity of plastic in kilograms that must be compensated to join the program? No, not, there's no minimum whatsoever. I mean, if if you already if you're a small company if you're a large company it's um we're really here to i mean you can gain the certification by just there's an audit process like all of our certifications that are third party accredited um so we look at the the chain and as long as you're transparent on what plastic is being used then we can verify that and offset it excellent excellent okay so for the moment we do not have uh, any other question so, uh, well, uh, anyway, for all, all uh, our followers, if you, in the future, in the next days, uh, hours, if you have questions, you can just write us and we will be glad and happy to, to answer to all your questions. So let me say thank you to both of you for your participation and uh, about this very interesting uh, uh, and so actual uh, <laughs> webinar and uh, argument. So, Thank you very much, really. Thank you, Mario. And thank you, Lysiane, for being our first. <laughs> thank you. Ciao, Lysiane. Ciao. Ciao, Adrian. Subscribe to our channel to get more content about sustainability.